Since we heard, have heard about the poetic nature of speech and even about the redemptive power of the poetic language, I would like to start my response to Professor Pattison's fascinating paper with a short poem by Emily Dickinson. Excuse my presentation, please. By homely gift and hindered words, the human heart is told of nothing. Nothing is the force that renovates the world. Poetry, literature, but also philosophy and theology consist in pointing beyond the instrumental understanding of language as we often find it in mathematics, logic, natural sciences and other discourses which claim to be representational and purely descriptive. As if the language were a tool present at hand which is possible to use. Against this techno-scientific mentality of post-Cartesian world, Heidegger argues that human beings belong to language and as Professor Pattison reminds us, language is what makes us human. I find this thesis intriguing and to understand it better, I will draw some inspiration from the Czech phenomenologist Jan Patočka, a student of Husserl and a follower of Heidegger, because Patočka in his Habilitationsschrift on the natural world as a philosophical problem, sketches a short chapter on the philosophy of language and speech. What is language? Patochka says that from the perspective of the subject, the one who is speaking, the prior experience is not a language, but speech. The act of speaking is a more or less successful attempt to use various means of expression for communication the communication with the others, as well as the communication of the person with herself. In this sense, the speech is the present form of language. However, language as such is not consciously experienced in our normal way of speaking. We recognize that there is something like language, for example, when we speak in a foreign language, as I do now, because at, the mo at that moment we realize that our means of expression is limited and that language as such is something bigger than our present form of using it. Nonetheless, the active speech is not our only experience with the limits of language. More original is perhaps the passive speech, which goes continuously in our heads, by which Patochka apparently refers to thinking. To have a thought, der Gedanke, means to formulate a thought. However, as Patochka reminds us, a thought is never a closed unit. We speak about developing thoughts and ideas. We recognize that thoughts might have variations and contain diver diverse possibilities how to develop them. Although there might be a well-expressed center of the idea or a thought, it does not exclude its peripheries. In short, for Patochka, a thought is something constantly escaping from our possession. And in this sense, language is the limit of our thinking. However, this limit points beyond itself and motivates us to think further. As I can work, for example, my English to express myself better than I do now, I can adopt the task of thinking as exploring new ways of formulating my thoughts and ideas. This shows us that language points beyond itself and is open to the future, to a potential which is inherent of the language itself. Thus, to complement Heidegger's thesis with Patochka, language is thinking and thinking is what makes us human. For this reason, Heidegger rightly fears the reduction of language to a mere instrument. The substitution of the event of speech for technology of language and in this sense also the substitution of the task of thinking for technical rationality leads to the objectification of our very being and being in the world. According to the instrumental logic of language, it is possible to master objects in the world and even the highest object, God, who is beyond the world. Similarly to Heidegger and Patochka, the father of philosophical postmodernism Jean-François Lyotard criticizes the instrumental language pragmatics. In his opus Le Différent, Lyotard uncovers a potential hegemony behind the concept of language understood as a set of rules for linking phrases. In all these instances, Lyotard, Patochka, Heidegger, 
we implicitly find the danger the one Professor Spatterson paper spoke of. However, the effort of our postmodern epoch to overcome the technology of language and to adopt the Heideggerian critique points to another danger. There are some tendencies, especially among authors who belong to the so-called theological turn in contemporary philosophy, to overcome language as such, to overcome language as an obstacle. For example, Caputo's search for religion without religion can be translated as the search for religion without decontamination of language. Similarly, Marion's plea for new understanding of God as pure giving presupposes a certain universal prelinguistic structure of religion, something that is given and the naming of this givenness is only a posteriori response of otherwise passive subject in a totally asymmetrical relationship with the other. In one way or another, the concepts of language as an instrument and language as an obstacle are symptoms of our crisis. And in this sense, Professor Pattison rightly points out that the crisis of modernity, our crisis, is a crisis of language. I would only add, following Patochka's analysis, that the crisis of language is also a crisis of thinking. This has interesting implications for theology. And one of those who has recognized the link between the crisis of language and the task of thinking is, for example, Jean-Yves Lacoste. In his recent book, Lacoste suggests moving from the techne of technology and its technical language to the task of theological thinking. And our question for discussion might be, what should be the language of technological thinking? What sh should be this language like? Professor Pattison suggests that it should be a poetic language. If poetry opens possibilities of a saving power for language and thus for our thinking, and leads to the encounter with a new God to come in the time of overwhelming nothingness, it seems to me that there is no reason to fear that this saving power is, to say it with Patochka, nothing. Nothing like a thing or no thing. Language is not a thing, that's something what poetry can show us. Theology's task and potential is to reveal that our thoughts are not mere things and the one we think of, the one with capital O, we think of and name in our words is nothing, no thing at all. And this brings me, brings me back to a poem by Emily Dickinson. By homely gift and hindered words the human heart is taught of nothing. Nothing is the force that renovates the world. Thank you.